What is up, Star Family? My name is Marissa. Welcome back to another episode of Two Cents Tuesdays. This week, I'm not surprised uh, about the message that I've been guided to talk about uh, with a little bit more personal anecdotes involved. Um, it's all about death and what losing my parents at kind of a younger age uh, taught me and how, you know, even though I deeply, deeply miss them and you know, that transition isn't easy no matter how spiritual you are. Uh, I see it as such a gift and such a blessing because it really helped me put things into perspective from a, a pretty young age. Um, so I want to start off, I want to preface it, this video with the fact that I didn't meet my biological father until I was 18 years old. The courts were involved. That's a different story for a different day. Uh, who knows how much of, you know, the story my mom told was real. Um, and my mom was adopted also at a young age. She was uh, maybe two months old when she was adopted. And I was adopted at two by my uh, stepdad. She, my mom remarried and my brother was five and I was two. So right away uh, from a young age, I understood that family is not uh, necessarily your blood or your genetics. Uh, family is who you choose. And if anything, sometimes the family that is your blood or your genetics that you kind of feel obligated to be around they can be the most toxic and the most harmful um, to you. And yeah, so that was one of the first um, impressions and um, insights that came through from a young age. Feels relevant to talk about a little bit, not too much just how my parents passed. Uh, so my mom took her life when I was 18 and my stepdad, um, he, passed away in his sleep. He slipped into a diabetic coma. Oh, this is harder than I thought it would be. My dad slipped into a diabetic coma and didn't wake up. And That's one thing about uh, losing people. Sometimes you can talk about it like you're just talking about the weather and it doesn't really, it doesn't feel as heavy and sometimes, man, I swear it's like it just happened yesterday. Um, and the thing about the way that my parents both left, I see it as the same virus. I see how both of them left this planet um, as a testament of how sick our society is and how disconnected a lot of people are from spirit and uh, themselves and how it just hurts my heart, um, especially as someone so sensitive to, um, to see these people that you love so much. and that you know were there that made those initial imprints on your first years uh, being incarnated and to see their suffering and to feel their suffering so deeply and and to see uh, that they were exposed to just as much darkness and negative thought form that we all are exposed to but they believed it they gave into the darkness and I think that's what the hardest part of of losing anyone is especially when it feels very premature um, and I know there's a lot of layers to you know people making their transitions and um, spirit has revealed to me in a lot of ways the relevance of you know my mom growing up with a parent with mental illness and you know everything that that how that catapulted me along my journey and now the amount of people that I get to affect on a daily basis and all of that there's a lot of layers I get it it just doesn't make it any easier and I think it's helped me in a lot of ways just tread, tread the planet a lot. <laughs> wow. Just a lot lighter because you never truly know like when your last interaction with someone's going to be. Regardless of how many disagreements you can get into or just how you don't, how much you don't see eye to eye or you know, this very human stuff that happens to us all the time, it pales in, in comparison to the fact that, uh, to, the, to the love that is there even beneath all of the disharmony that can exist within families and just within relationships in general. 
Um, so this also this knowingness led me to record my other video about the power of forgiveness and why I think that's so important because to, to be holding unforgiveness in your heart when someone that you love so much uh, passes, you know, here today, gone tomorrow, that's not the type of heaviness that you want to take with you or that you want to carry for the rest of this incarnation. And in a lot of ways, um, I'm grateful just because it's, it's helped me hold my own daughter um, a lot closer. There would be times when she was younger, uh, when she was like first born, and I, I just remember just like standing in my living room sometimes or just lying in bed and just holding her and just uh, really wanting to remember that moment and just be present with that moment because I knew she wasn't going to be that small ever again and I knew I was never going to get these moments back with her. So it definitely um, helped me hold my own child a lot a lot closer. Um, and the other day when I was first really getting these downloads about the importance of, of, you know, just talking about this kind of stuff and making this video, I couldn't stop crying and it was after I put Maya down and there's been a lot of release around it still. It comes in waves, you know, losing people that you love. And uh, I sat in her room and I just watched her sleep. And for the longest time, butterflies have been my and my mom's form of communication. Um, I have a tattoo of a butterfly for her. She would always say, you know, I'll, I'll love you until the stars turn to butterflies. So that's always been our thing. And especially when she first passed, I would see monarchs all the time. Like that was her way of communicating that she was closer to me than ever before. And I remember lying, or sitting next to Maya watching her sleep in bed and I just had so much love for her and just thought she was so precious and so beautiful and such an angel. And it was like, you know, I can tell when I'm getting impressions from, um, you know, uh, behind the veil or from the other side, whatever you want to call it, from my guides. And um, I felt my mom communicate to me that the way that I was looking at her in that moment was how she used to look at me when I would sleep. Um, and so that's just another thing, like losing people when you're younger, uh, it, it just, you get these synchronicities, you get these signs that are just so eerie and so non-coincidental. They're just too perfectly planned that it, it forces you to believe and to understand that there really is something else that, you know, death as we know it from this perspective is not the end. And so in a lot of ways, I just feel, you know, so blessed, blessed by it. And I don't know who where I heard this from the first time, but I'll never forget someone saying that, you know, a lot of the times when we feel like our parents from this level um, weren't the parents that we felt like we needed. A lot of the times after they've made their transition, especially if they do it when we're a bit younger, that from that vantage point, once they've reconnected with Source and once their, their own veils of confusion and forgetfulness have been lifted, that they can finally be the parents that that they wanted to be um, and the parents that we needed but didn't have and they're just they're still there even in a more powerful way than they might have been able to be there for us when we were you know everyone was still alive you know I think in a lot of ways that's why I don't get too tied up in goals or achievements or anything I don't get too caught up in the rat race because I see that what what is that all worth? What is it all worth to constantly be trying to go after things outside of you when the gold has been right in front of you the whole time? You know, it's these relationships, it's these people, it's this the different variations of love that we can experience, whether it be from lovers, from parents towards kids, like all the variations of love that we can feel, it's right in front of us. And um, I, I don't get too caught up in shit that doesn't matter, honestly. Or I try not to, it definitely gets easier 
um, as time goes on, but in a big way, um, being exposed to death uh, so often growing up um, definitely sets the tone for the rest of this incarnation. It's really helped me understand that my parents or the people that gifted me their genetic coding, uh, they're, they're just souls too. That, you know, there doesn't have to be such a heavy attachment to what we need them to be, right? I think in our culture and our society, we put so much pressure on our parents that weren't there for us. They neglected us. They didn't treat us well. Um, and while I definitely feel like um, that's a different story for a different day. Uh, it's also helped me understand that, you know, my mom was a soul as well, and she just had a little bit more darkness in this incarnation. And my, you know, my dad, my stepdad, he was a soul too, and he had his own things to explore and to learn this round. And it helps take the blame away from why we were conditioned in certain ways. You know, that's, uh, in my experience, in my opinion, all of that is just part of the contract. It, it sets you up in a certain way, it creates a certain amount of momentum. When we go through those pockets of trauma or we have those, those childhood experiences that were a little bit heavier um, or a little harder to experience. Um, you know, like Bashar says, it's like the rubber band effect. Um, when you pull a rubber band back into the darkness, the deeper you pull into the darkness, the more sure you can be that when you release the rubber band, the faster and um, the deeper that you fling yourself into the light. And I definitely have felt that everything that's been in adversity growing up was, was nothing short of, of grace. You know, overall, this just reminds me that nothing is here to stay. You know, we want to love so deeply and so freely, and it can be hard to understand that no matter how much we love, no matter how deeply we love, we're gonna lose it all. And not only are we gonna lose it all, but we have to watch it slowly decay. And I don't mean to get grim or to, f to seem pessimistic, but um, that's just the nature of it. That's just the nature of this incarnation. But just like, you know, we've heard so many masters say that's why it's not wise to lay your treasures where rust and moth doth corrupt. It really forces you, this whole idea of mortality, um, to look inwards and, and to seek the kingdom and to seek what we all truly feel in our bones. And that's the fact that there's so, 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 so much more than meets the eye. There's a lot more to it. And we all feel that. We all know that. So... That was emotional, and um, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, but I hope you got something out of this. Um, I definitely have. And I just appreciate all of you that leave so much love on this channel, man. I feel so grateful for all of you. And uh, yeah, as always, I hope you're well. I hope you're prospering. And um, we're all in this together, truly. Much love, reach out always. If you want to connect real time, I'd love nothing more than that. Much love.